Hello, good morning guys. Here I am at home doing yet another lecture on YouTube uh, because I have tested positive for COVID. Um, and before I get started, I'll make one, one little observation here. I've got my dog Prada sitting next to me here and she's a really good girl and I love her dearly. Uh, but she licks herself a lot and she's always scratching and I don't know what's going on with this girl. So over the over the course of this short video, if you hear weird noises in the background, <laughs> rest assured that is just Prada being Prada. Okay? Uh, so let's move on, alright? So the last uh, the last lesson we had, which was over taxonomy, uh, you know, Linnaeus and whatnot. I introduced you to the classification scheme uh, for humans, okay? Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So just for review's sake, let's go ahead and crank that out one more time. Animal, chordate, uh, mammal, primate, and of course we're getting more and more specific, okay? Uh, and lots of things are still primates, you know, you've got lemurs and monkeys and whatnot. Uh, but we belong to a really special group known as the Great Apes, which includes things like uh, chimps and uh, gorillas and, and a couple of others that we'll get to in just a few moments, all right? Uh, getting more specific here, our family is human, or if you recall from last time, I used the word hominid. As far as I'm concerned, I'm fine with either word, okay? And our scientific name is Homo sapiens. Uh, when you write it out, or, you know, type it anyways, uh, capital HOMO, lowercase sapiens, in italics, or underlined. And if you do the abbreviated form, H period, lowercase sapiens. Moving on. Now this slide here is packed full of a lot of uh, interesting information. And I want you to, you know, make, make a note, pay attention to this, okay? So, primate, that's our order, okay? Uh, so what makes primates different than the carnivores, you know, the dogs, the cats, and so forth? Uh, what makes primates different than ungulates, you know, like cows and deer? Uh, so what are our, you know, key features? So I have a list here, and there's probably plenty of other ones, okay? Uh, but here we go. Primates have prehensile hands. That means hands that you can grab with, hands that have opposable thumbs. And in most cases, uh, the big toes. That's not so much the, the case with humans, but in most other uh, primates, the, the toes are also prehensile. They can grab things, uh, such, as, such as tree branches, okay? Uh, again, number two is kind of similar because we use our hands so much for grabbing. Uh, you know, we're going to have sensitivity there. A lot of, uh, you know, a lot of nerve endings there for touch. But that's not unusual. You know, raccoons and other animals that aren't primates also have sensitivity in their hands for, for touch as well. That's, that's a bit of a convergent evolution there, I, I suppose. Uh, number three, big brains. Really big brains. Uh, primates are some of the smartest animals on the planet. Uh, obviously humans, right? We're at the top. Uh, you can make an argument that cetaceans, you know, your, your whales and dolphins, that they're up there as well. But uh, number three definitely... Uh, you know, lends itself toward the primate big brain, the human big brain specifically. Uh, we walk on twos, at least some of us do. So we're, we have flexible shoulders, flexible hips. And that kind of uh, goes hand in hand with number five. We are bipeds. Uh, you know, we um, walk on our two legs with our two feet. Uh, other, other primates can kind of get up on two legs for a few moments here and there, such as uh, gorillas. Uh, but the other one that does it the best, at least the second best, would be orangutans, right? Uh, so, yeah, I'll, you know, you'll see some footage down the road of an orangutan that kind of stands upright and walks around a little bit. They're a little bit awkward, but you have to recall that most of an orangutan's life and the life of most primates is up in the trees, hence why they have prehensile hands for, for grabbing things, okay? Uh, number six, one child per pregnancy, usually. Uh, that's pretty unique. We don't have a litter the way, you know, dogs do and so forth. Okay. Uh, fingernails instead of claws. Omnivorous teeth. So that, that's a big one, too. And I want you to kind of pay attention. What does it mean to be an omnivore? So we eat plant matter. We eat animal matter. 
So you don't have canines as sharp as a dog or a cat or a tiger or whatever, right? Uh, but you don't have a whole mouth full of molars like ungulates, like a cow or a horse would. So we have a little bit of both, okay? And I, I mentioned taste buds as well. Uh, cows and deer have more taste buds than we do. But that's because their lives depend on whether or not they eat you know, the right plants. If they eat poisonous plants, they better... They better make sure they have the taste buds for bitterness, okay? Uh, whereas, you know, cats hardly have, you know, just a fraction of, of the taste buds that even we do. So we're kind of somewhere in the middle as being primates. We have some plants we eat and some meat we eat, okay? Uh, we are diurnal. That means we sleep at night and come out during the day. So that's pretty unique uh, towards primates. Uh, and because we come out during the day, we see in color. So I put cones for color. It, I think you should remember that we have rods and cones for, for vision, and specifically it is the cones that allow us to have color vision, all right? And, uh, you know, we are extremely social, big thing there. That's why people love their dogs. Dogs are also social, so we have that pack mentality, whereas opposed to, like, cats. Cats are typically, uh, you know, solitary. You know, think of a, of a lion that, that is by itself. It's ambushing its prey. So primates are, are rather unique in that regard. Okay, moving on. Primates are also pretty darn diverse. You know, today you have this little bitty pygmy mouse lemur, super tiny. You have, you know, mountain gorillas. And of course, we're, we're kind of in, in between. I guess we're large. We get over, you know, 200 pounds in some cases or whatever. But, uh, you know, we're kind of somewhere in the middle there. Again, kind of speaking to the diversity of, of primates. Now, the largest ever is believed to be this guy known as Gigantopithecus. We talked about Gigantopithecus a lot, uh, you know, earlier this semester, I believe, and we were getting into kind of Bigfoot and having some fun with, with that. Um, so if Bigfoot was real, could it be Gigantopithecus? Who knows? And I have this picture here just to kind of remind you in the reboot live action movie of The Jungle Book, uh, that's not an orangutan this time around. Now it's the distant relative of an orangutan which would also be one of the great apes that is now extinct, Gigantopithecus. So here are some of the categories uh, of different primates. And you can see that they're lemurs, old world, old world monkeys, which means Africa and Asia, uh, new world monkeys, which means South America, small apes and the great apes. And like I said earlier, we are great apes, all right? So there you have lemurs, and as you can tell by my memes and clip arts. I'm kind of a dork, but anyways, moving on. Old world monkeys. There's quite a bit of diversity here. 132 species in all. And because of the name old world, like I said earlier, most are from Africa, uh, a few in Asia. And there is one that comes from uh, the mountains of Europe, believe it or not. And of all the old world monkeys, the one that you probably know the, the, the best would be the baboon. If you are, and I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be funny or silly or nasty or whatever, but I always get guys who ask me, why is the the butt of the baboon always red? That's that's the females. So it's um a sign of attractiveness, a sign of sexual maturity. So when the when her behind is turning red like that, it means she's ready to breed. Okay, so there you have a little biology, right? I. Right. Now we get to the New World monkeys, uh, about a hundred and all, and this is these these are the guys that you, you think of when you're talking about the Amazon or Latin America, and you've heard of several of these like howler monkeys and squirrel monkeys and, and whatnot, and of course many many others, and you see what I wrote in red there. How did they even get here? There is something called the New World monkey raft theory, which is a little bit um <laughs> debated. But to this point in time, it's the best theory we've got because, you know, it's a long ways from Africa to South America, right? So how did they get here? Well, that's the belief that they, some ancestor must have floated over on, on driftwood, uh, you know, at some point in time. And, and they diversified and adapted through processes of natural selection here in the New World or in South America specifically. Does that sound kind of far-fetched? Yeah, but do you have any other explanations like, you know, like, did aliens abduct them and drop them off? Like, like seriously, there is no other explanation that makes any sense at all, you know? Uh, you can't say Pangaea. I know some of y'all were going to guess that. Well, couldn't it be Pangaea? No, because primates evolved 
long after the continents had had um, you know divided by means of uh, plate tectonics. That's interesting, right? I know someone was going to ask that, so there I, got, I beat you to that one. All right, and um, these guys are the masters of of having prehensile tails. They use their tails as like an extra arm. They can just hang from the branches. Uh, very cool, right? And um, oh. The other thing about that New World monkey raft theory that I wanted to, to share with you briefly, there is a precedent, and, you, and we did cover this in class uh, a while back. You might recall from last semester that the marine iguanas, which are the descendants of the green iguanas from Latin America, they probably got to the Galapagos Islands on driftwood as well. So that, that has taken place before, biologically and evolutionarily speaking. It's just going from South America to the Galapagos is a much shorter distance than going from Africa to South America, but what do I know? Okay, so there's that New World monkey raft theory I just mentioned. And then just for fun, how do you know if it's a uh, monkey or an ape? <laughs> Monkeys have tails, all right? Monkeys have tails. And there's a silly little veggie tail song that speaks to that. And I'll, I'll, I'll post it on Google Classroom for you later on down the road, okay? I also have a video that I'll post on Google Classroom down the road about howler monkeys. These are the bad boys that can howl and hoot. Uh, you can hear them from miles and miles away, and, and many of you are familiar with that already. It's pretty full, but like I said, I'll put that clip on uh, on a separate you know link on Google Classroom down the road, okay? Now the gibbons, these are the small apes. Uh, not so many, like with some of the other categories, you saw that there was 100 or 132 for some of the monkeys. Uh, gibbons, not as many. But now we're getting a little bit closer to, to us in terms of uh, genetic similarities. And now, here, here you have our category, the great apes. Uh, so besides hominids, if, if you choose to, to lump hominids or humans with great apes, uh, of course you also have gorillas, chimps, and one from Asia that I mentioned earlier, the orangutan, that's still alive today. What you see here is a cladogram. This is a kind of a an evolutionary or genetic family tree of sorts. And it shows you uh, on the right here, the theoretical branch uh, between chimps and humans, which, which again, theoretically took place somewhere around four and six million years ago in Africa. So I just said Africa. So I'm kind of really hitting the point here that, uh, uh, primate origins started in Africa, and as we'll talk about in the next lesson, that includes humans, okay? And, um, look, review, you know, we, we went through the levels of taxonomy. What are some of those key characteristics of primates? You should be aware of that. What are the categories? What is our category? So technically, we would be uh, with the great apes. How did monkeys get to South America? That's a great question. And, of course, which ape is closest to to us genetically, that would be the chimp, okay? And uh, you see, I'm sure most of y'all knew that already. You see that a lot in various movies. I was watching a movie last night on Netflix about a, I think it's called Awake, where people couldn't fall asleep and chimps were suffering from this disease as well. So yeah, there's that. And I just wanted to touch base on one last thing here. I put this, I always put these Quizlets on here and they're packed full of good stuff. Like what is a primate? And you know, you, there you see the monkeys, apes, and, and, and humans, and, and others, and whatever. But I think I'll stop there. I've been talking a lot, and I have one more uh, one more presentation I want to do later on today about human organs part two. So now that now that we got into, you know, what are, what are primates and, and what are apes a little bit, uh, and what are some of their conservation issues, that's something I want to get into as well down the road. But now that I've mentioned some of this, the next lesson will be over uh, specifically humans now, like Neanderthals and, and us, ultimately. So that's about it, guys. Until next time, peace out and God bless and see you soon.